welcome everyone welcome to session number three um thank you very much for all the comments in the whatsapp group it's good to see that you guys are following and that you um are finding what we're doing interesting and hey we got some good feedback on the cahoots test the other day um so um a word of warning if it generated that much interest let's have another one tomorrow so i'm going to demonstrate it again hopefully uh, this time you'll be looking at what we're doing so there is a test tomorrow and it's going to be on <clears throat> tutorials numbers one two and three all right so there'll be questions drawn from each of those those three tutorials so make sure that you're up to date by the time we meet tomorrow we're going to have another test all right but um what you did last night um tutorial number two is very important all right so um, i'm going to just first of all ask anyone what uh does anyone have a, a an experience or some comments about the tutorial number two so please put your hands up uh, in the Zoom and we'll invite you to tell us what you thought. Um, you can tell us good things. You can tell us bad things. You can tell us whatever your experience was. Was it frustrating? Was it interesting, et cetera? So um, I would like to hear, first of all, you guys, anything that caught your eye in terms of tutorial number two, Tapiwa, what, what was your take on tutorial two? Okay, tutorial two was very interesting. Yeah, I enjoyed the uh, uh, searching on the MobSeq portal. Uh, I learned a lot of things there, a lot of OER. Uh, some of the stuff that I was failing to get when I was at work, especially to do is ICT. I got a lot of information. So I think OER really helps. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, 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 searching for information. Nice, all right. Uh, anyone else have an opinion on tutorial two? Did it work? Did it not work? Did you find it frustrating? Did you find it interesting? Galaxy S8. It can't be your real name. I'll change Galaxy. I'll exchange it. The tutorial, this... was, the tutorial was okay, uh -huh. but uh, I think we need to have a laptop. I was using a phone. So mm -hmm. the screen on the phone and to navigate, it was really a challenge, but otherwise navigating those things, it was okay. I also tried to get Nelson Mandela. I used uh, mine and I looked for Mugabe and um, I got um, a number of pictures and stuff, but then now to get uh, the tools and you go to the CCs. Yeah, that one yeah, was a bit of a challenge, but... Um, it was uh, an eye opener. Thank you. Good. All right. Um, uh, yeah, uh, fix your name at the bottom. I think you right click the little picture and then you can change your name. I think it is. It says uh, rename at the bottom. So you can right click your little black square and then uh, choose rename. And then that way we get to know you as well. All right. Um, so, yes, uh, was it designed for a phone? Um, it was uh, the little tutorial package that we used to create the uh, tutorial is designed to be read on the phone. But I think the the previous participant uh, comments that it's quite difficult to flick between one open app and another open app on a phone. Okay, it gets a bit fiddly sometimes. So um, yeah, you got to really know your your apps and your phone to be able to move backwards and forwards between the two. So good point. That was interesting. All right, so let me, um, it's a, uh, tutorial two is so important that I do want to highlight during this session some of the very important things that, that are in there. So uh, if you have not, for some reason, done tutorial two, then you really, really need to get to grips with it. Okay, it is one of the key tutorials. Obviously, number one sets the scene, but number two is the skill. All right, so very important skill to be able to get out there and find the OER. So I'm going to very quickly just um, repeat a few little pieces simply because um, this is kind of key to being an OER practitioner, all right, is can you find existing OERs before you create your own one? 
All right. You don't want to create your own OER if there's already one that's out there that's um, uh, that is as good or as uh, might be better than what you can produce. All right. So here we go. Have a look at the screen then. Um, the uh, the first thing we need to be clear about is what is the search term you're looking for? And I mentioned yesterday in the Zoom meeting, and I'm going to say it again now, but the more specific the search term, the better your results are. All right. So if you're a, um, a maths and science teacher and um, you in your search criteria, you were to use the word mathematics, that is a disaster. That is a, it's asking for trouble. All right. It's just too big. There are thousands and th hundreds of thousands of resources that have mathematics as a basis. So you have to drill down deeper. Okay. You got to go deep, deep, deep and try and be as specific as possible. So I try to encourage you to go to your, um, uh, your syllabus documents, your curriculum documents, and identify proper, um, specific keywords. Uh, in, in the tutorial, the example I gave you was for energy and power, right? It's grade two, I think, if I remember correctly. It's actually from the form one to four syllabus, all right? There's a section on um, geog it's a geography syllabus. So you don't want to search for geography and the topic is energy and power and even energy and power is too broad. All right. So you need to get really, really deep down. So words like renewables or things like um, nuclear and thermal plants. OK, so you want to be very, very specific. OK, I think you got that. All right, so then you're now ready to go and search. So once you're ready to go search, where do you go? Now, most of us go to Google. I mean, I'm, I'm on Google every day, often. All right, it's the, one of the easiest search machines out there to find what you want on the internet. And you can use Google to find OERs. So, but how? All right, so the trick then was to actually, and I'm going to do it rather than use the tutorial, is go to the advanced search. Um, I can never remember the URL off the top of my head, so I always just go to Google and type advanced search. Google advanced search, here we go. And uh, let me make it a bit bigger so you can see all the little the words. All right, there we go. So um, first of all, what is it you're looking for? So in the tutorial, we used um, Nelson Mandela, but let's let's go for um, let's go for something more local. Who built Great Zimbabwe? All right, so that's my search uh, criteria. Um, uh, I would like to know what's the histories behind that. You might say even that's too broad. Maybe I need to be a bit more specific. And if you come down to the last one here, usage rights, you can see it says not filtered by license. Now we do, we want to use only OERs. All right, so here are some other ways to describe the license conditions, the usage rights. Uh, free to use or share. All right, so now that you know your Creative Commons licenses, you can probably guess that that's almost any of the Creative Commons licenses. Remember, they all allow you to use and share. So it could be any of those six that we had in the test yesterday. Free to use, share, even commercially, which means these ones can't have NC in them, right? Non-commercial, because it says you can use them commercially. This one here says to use, share, or modify. All right, so keep in mind then, that must be uh, all the Creative Commons licenses that do not have no derivatives in them. Okay, and then finally, uh, free to use, to share, to modify, even commercially, must be something like CC BY, all right? Something really open because there's hardly any restrictions. So let me go for that first one and uh, that last one and just do a search. All right, so here come our results. Um, uh, the First of all, uh, lumenlearning.com, Great Zimbabwe, 
part of the world civilization. Um, well, so let's uh, open that in another tab. I'll go to that in a moment. Uh, we've got another one here, Great Zimbabwe Wiki Travel. Now, we're not really tourists. We want to teach history or social science or something like that. So we'll skip that one. Um, Great Zimbabwe um, uh, on Wikipedia. That could be interesting. So we'll open that one as well. Uh, and so it goes on. And you can have a look then. You can see there's even some images as well. Um, and let's, there's one on architecture of Great Zimbabwe. That sounds interesting. So let's open those. So let's have a look at the first one. The first one comes from the course World Civilization. It's on Great Zimbabwe and it's all nicely laid out. It's got learning objectives. I'm sorry, turn that off. Learning objectives, it's got the key points, it's got some fame, uh, some of the more specialized terms. Uh, and then you can see there's like a little history. There are some pictures. Uh, and then it goes on about the kingdom of Zimbabwe. So if you're trying to work out who built it, then um, we can start finding out about the theories of who built it, decline uh, of the state and the city, et cetera. All right, so what is the license? If we scroll down license and attributions, here it is. It is CC by SA. So cool. Okay, that one works. We could use that as part of our history lesson or our social science lesson. We look at this one here, um, uh, uh, Wikipedia. Uh, this is more like an encyclopedia, so it has uh, links and maps and pictures and a rather factual description. And if we scroll to the bottom, we can see here is the license. Okay, Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike uh, license. So that's nice as well. We could um, incorporate that as a resource that the students could either use and cut up, or we could use it for our, um, for our lesson, etc. And let's have a look at this one. I don't really know this one. Uh, architecture of Great Zimbabwe. And it's talking about the various different complexes within Great Zimbabwe, some of the key points, some also uh, of the terms. And there's a little story, some pictures. Uh, there's the Acropolis and the hill complex uh, and so on. All right, so that's looking cool. Oh, and even some of the artifacts. Okay, one of the Zimbabwe birds. And if we scroll to the bottom, let's have a look. Is there a license? Yes, CC by SA. So cool. Again, something we can use and not worry about copyright. So that's why Google uh, Advanced Search is so powerful, is that it really does give us a whole load of already filtered uh, OERs that we could use. All right. So I'll close all those. So the next question is, oh, but what, what about images? What happens if I'm looking for images? All right. So um, uh, if you go to the images, it's slightly different. Um, you just do a normal search for images, and then you can say, I would like to look at, you push the tools button, and you say usage rights here. Show me all the Creative Commons licenses. All right. And there we can now see all these pictures. Apparently, we can use without worrying about um, uh, copyright uh, and so on. So let me just see. Uh, let's go for one of them here. I'm going to go for this one. Sorry, Mr. Um, Mo. Yes. My yes. Mom. Sorry. Please, may you just go back a bit? And uh, I think I missed something there. All right, let's say uh, on the pictures and uh, on that one. Yes, on images. On images, okay. So let's do it again. Let's, uh, let me come in fresh. All right, so now I go to Google, normal Google. Let's say, for example, I'm looking for images. If you know the URL, you can just replace www with images and it'll take you to the images page. You see there's images here. But if you can't remember that, it doesn't really matter. Because even from the main page, you can um, uh, put in what you're looking for. And the uh, trick is then you'll click on this little button here, images. Take me to the images. All right. So now all the images that we are seeing could be anything. There's not, they're not filtered yet. So you have to go to this button here, tools. You see the tools button? 
So you click on there, and now you get this extra line here, and one of them is usage rights. So you can click on usage rights, and you can say, show me all the Creative Commons licenses. Okay, so here we go. Here they are. I'm just going to grab one. This time I'm going to go for this one. All right. It says this picture is on Flickr. So we can go through and look at the original if you want. Here it is. And we can say, uh, what is the license? And the license is down here. The little man, the little dollar with a sign through it, and the equal sign, which hopefully you remember now, is attribution, non-commercial, share alike. Okay, so we can take his picture. We don't have to ask for permission. Um, if we want, we could put um, a writing or a poem on top. We could edit the picture. We could make it brighter in a, uh, uh, in a Photoshop type uh, package. Uh, and all of that is allowed. The only things we're not allowed to, oh, hang on. No, this one says no derivatives. So we're not allowed to change it. All right, so we can use it as it is. We can stick it in our PowerPoint. We could put it in our textbook. We could do, uh, hand it out to the kids to uh, build websites or whatever, but it has to stay the same. So we're not allowed to fiddle with it. All right, well, that's fair enough. All right, so keep that in mind then. That's how you can look for images using Google. All right, let me look at one more. I'm going to go back. Let's look at this one here. Let's say, for example, you wanted this one. This one's on Wikimedia. Here it is. All right, what are we allowed to do with this one? Remember you, your um, licensing. Creative Commons Attribution. CC by. So it's as simple as that. And that means we can do whatever we like. So if we wanted to now cut it up into ribbons and then put another picture th th through or, or put titles on top of the picture and all that type of thing, that's fine. It's just easy by, there is no restrictions here. All right. So keep that in mind then, very nice way to find images. Uh, any questions on Google before I go to the next one? Tapiwa. Uh, okay. Uh, when you are using uh, a phone, that two button, uh, you, you cannot access it easily. Even if you try to uh, to touch it on a touchpad, and you can't, you cannot, it cannot open. That's the, you cannot uh, find the CC. Mm. No, um, all right. Only... I, I hear you. If those buttons aren't uh, as uh, easily accessible on the phone, then there's a way to cheat. So what you'd go is you go Great Zimbabwe, and then you would go Creative Commons. You see, I've written it in the actual search field. So now when you search, and let's go, um, let's go for all. So what it's trying to do now is it's trying to find the words Creative Commons somewhere on the page. I'm hoping it's going to pick up the license at the bottom of the page. So if I go to the uh, one of these early ones, um, let's go with this one. All right. Um, then if I scroll to the bottom, there's where it says Creative Commons. All right. So it's, it's a bit of a cheat, and it means it'll give you everything that's got Creative Commons on, and sometimes it might not actually be the license. So then you need to be a little bit careful. But if you're on the phone and you find you haven't got access to all those advanced features, then do that little hack. Just type in whatever you're looking for and then the words Creative Commons. You need to check though, because it's a much rougher way of doing a search. All right, I hope that was useful. Uh, any other queries on Google? Rutendo is looking very relaxed. Hey, are you in your car? <laughs> right. Uh, the next one, and I'm going to demonstrate, is um, Creative Commons search. Um, I'm just doing the same thing here. Um, the, I just wrote in, in Google Creative Commons search because I can never remember. Oh, there it is, search.creativecommons.org. So if you go there, um, it'll bring you to this page. If you just go to the main page,
If you go to the main page, oh, hang on, that's too close. Sorry. If you go to the main page, it looks like this, creativecommons.org, and you'll see there's even a search button at the top here, search for CC images, um, and that will take you into here. And this is their new... Um, search for images. So you could also write Great Zimbabwean here if you wanted to, but you'll get almost exactly the same results as you would with Google. All right. So why I like the this one is not the new one. I like the old one. All right. So if you look at the bottom here, it says go to old CC search. All right. So old one's a bit cooler <laughs> because it allows you to find things other than images. All right. I mean, we can find images of Google. So uh, uh, why not? Um, this one is kind of more fun. So say, for example, I'm doing a PowerPoint and I want some music in my PowerPoint. Um, but I don't, I haven't got any money to buy royalty free stuff. Okay. And they're always expensive, they're always in dollars and dollars cost a fortune. All right. So what you could do is you can go in here. I'm looking for something that's got Africa in it. But and that's very broad, but for music it works. All right. And then you can say, uh, I'm interested in SoundCloud, I'm interested in music. Or you could go for CC Mixter, it's also music, but SoundCloud's my favorite. So I'm going to go there, SoundCloud. Um, and now it's showing me images, uh, 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 music, which has the Africa as part of its description. So if I go for this one, oh, hang on. It's trying to sell me a subscription. If you go to this one, I don't know if you can hear. Ah, a bit too funky for me. I'm old. All right. I like more like more obvious stuff. So let's try the second one. <coughs> hey, it sounds like a remix of that song by Toto. Oh, I'm showing my age. You guys are so young. You probably don't even remember that one. Okay. And what about this one? <laughs> Okay, it's very West African, that one. It's not so, it's kind of a bit different. Uh, okay, say for example, that was the one that you went for. So then you can uh, click in here. Uh, this is the main page for this particular song. And um, there's the Creative Commons license. Creative Commons license. There's a button somewhere where you can then download the piece of music. And obviously they want you to attribute. So who do you attribute? Where your beat set, where your beat set. All right, uh, is who you would attribute in your in your little section on attribution. Uh, but there's the Creative Commons license. It's simply CC BY. All right, so that means you can do what you like with it. So cool. All right, so that's why I like the Creative Commons search. I like all the little extra funny things like the clip art and the music and all so on. Then we also said that sometimes. You already know what you're looking for. You're looking for a video. Uh, when I'm designing, sometimes I say, all right, now I want to have a video in here. We've had enough text. Now we need a bit of uh, multimedia. So then I would often use YouTube uh, to find my videos. Now, YouTube is very cool in the sense that there's just hundreds of thousands, millions of resources available. So let me show you rather than go through the tutorial. So if you go to youtube.com, and let's say, for example, we are doing a project on Great Zimbabwe. So uh, you're going to YouTube, and then you do a, a, a search, um, and here comes the results. Now, there are some lovely stuff um, on Great Zimbabwe. Uh, let's have a look at this one. Trading. Stretched across a tree-peppered expanse in southern Africa lies the magnificent ruins of Great Zimbabwe. All right, that looks cool. But the problem is this might be fully copyrighted. All right, so there are some lovely stuff, but can you just use anything? Sadly, you can't. All right, so here's our list of all the videos it's found on Great Zimbabwe, and there's lots, all right? But now we need to filter so that we get only Creative Commons licenses. So if you go to the filter button, um, at, you can see that, let me do that again. So here's your list, here's your results. And there's a filter button just above on the top left. You click on there 
And then in the fourth column, you see there's one that says creator comments. So you can click on that. And here are the ones that have a creative commons license. All right. Um, <laughs> how does that get there? That's not great, Zimbabwe. Uh, and the, um, right. So let's say this, you, li you like the look of this one. So let's go have a quick look. Le Monument National du Grand Zimbabwe est situé à une altitude d'environ 800 ah, oui, oui. Oh, oh. dans une région peu peuplée du Bantu Shona, ville royale. Le Zimbabwe. All right. So you might say, oh, I like the visuals, but it's in French. That's not particularly useful. Can I not put my own uh, commentary on top? Right. Because it's an OER, you can. All right, so how do we know that it's an OER? So we did that filter, but if you click on um, share, oh, sorry, I'm lying. If you click on more, oh, show more here, then it shows you the license at the bottom. So here it is, Creative Commons Attribution Reuse Allowed. And if you wanted to, the nice thing is the um, he's given you the English translation. So you could um, now um, do your own voiceover and then uh, re-edit the, the video so that it has the English component. So cool. All right. Uh, but let's say, for example, no, we wanted a different one. Uh, someone's made a, um, a 3D model. I don't know if that's useful. This one. It's quite recent, it went up last year. The Zimbabwe controversy. This is basically about the intrigue of the ruins found in Central Africa, mainly centered in Zimbabwe. Mm. The history of the various ruins can be... Forts were also crudely constructed. All right, so it sound, sounds like it's interesting. Obviously, the, uh, the whole idea of how... Every political system seems to say that Great Zimbabwe is all uh, endorses their particular perspective of the world. Okay. Um, so you might say, oh, cool, I could use this. What is the license again? So you click on the, let me do that again. So you go, show more Creative Commons attribution. So then you would click on, um, uh, you, so you can, you can take this. Now, um, there is an argument that. If you don't take the video, if you just link to it, then you don't really have to worry about copyright. So anything on YouTube could be used. So say, for example, you're just posting the YouTube URL into a WhatsApp group. You don't have to worry about copyright because you haven't actually made a copy. You have just linked to the original. All right. So that's fine. The problem is when you want to start giving people the actual file. All right. You need to take a copy and then pass it on. So then you must use only Creative Commons videos. So how do you download a, a, a YouTube video? Uh, the easiest way is just to go, I can never remember. Just uh, do a quick search. The one I like is called this one, YT1S. What a horrible name. But anyway, you go here, you go back here, you uh, quickly go to the, uh, we can right click and say copy the video URL, and then you come in here and then you can just paste it in, control V, and um, you say convert. All right, so now when they found it, it wants to know what format do you want it in? All right, so I normally just go for MP, uh, MP4 uh, and a lot of people struggle with bandwidth, so don't go too too big. Uh, you can. You can go for, like, it's high definition, uh, 1080. 720 is still quite nice. 480 is getting a little small. If you go for 360, then um, it's going to be only 36 megs, although it's quite a lot, I suppose, um, and so on. All right. So if you go MP3, then you're really only getting the sound. All right. So, but you, MP4 is sound and video. All right. So keep that in mind. And um, um, and then you can uh, 
uh, you got to go to convert now. I think that's it. Oh, <laughs> it's changed since I was in the previous YouTube downloader. All right. So, um, but there's lots of them. So that's the one I've used in the past, although it looks different from what I remember. Um, and uh, it's free. They're free and they're, they're online. So now those ones, if long as they had Creative Commons license, you can share them with your class and your colleagues, et cetera, and there's no problem. Um, all the others ones, all the other videos on YouTube are fully copyrighted. So you have to be very careful. You can share the link, but you can't share a copy. So for example, yesterday, um, I posted our Zoom meeting to YouTube and then I gave you the link. And that, um, uh, therefore, I, it, it didn't matter what I licensed it as because you had the link. But then someone, I forget who now, um, put a copy of that file on the WhatsApp. Now, if, it, if my, my YouTube license had been um, fully copyrighted, that would have been in violation. But actually, I did put a Creative Commons license on our stuff. All right. So uh, that person was fully in their right to post a copy of it in the WhatsApp group. So I hope you're getting the hang of that. All right. Cool. And how are we doing for time? No, I mustn't go on too much longer. Um, the other thing I'd like you to uh, get from tutorial two is OER Commons. Now, um, OER Commons, let's just rather go there. OER Commons then is a, a very nice place for primary and secondary education uh, educators to get open content and aligned to uh, the curriculum. All right. So, um, uh, okay, it's moaning about my password, but don't worry about that. So, here we are, oercommons.org. And um, you can write from the front page. You can say, I need stuff on. Great Zimbabwe, and you can do a search. All right, so now it hasn't got a lot. In fact, it's got one on the history of South Central Africa and one on macroeconomics. There must be some aspect uh, in there that's about Zimbabwe. So that wasn't very useful. All right, um, but say, for example, you're more on the curriculum. So keep in mind that OER Commons is mostly American. Uh, does their syllabus stretch towards studying our countries here in Southern Africa? No, no, they're not interested. They're all interested in their own history. All right, so well, fair enough. But um, so therefore, if, but if you're looking at something like um, equa uh, let's go um, equilateral triangles, all right, um, and let's have a look what we've got if we search there. Right now on things like, which are more generic and more global, then it's quite good stuff. All right, you can see there's a whole load of things here about teaching the equilateral triangle. Okay, let's, this one here has got CC by NC. Let's just have a look at that one, it's grade seven. Um, and there's a little license. Here's a little description. It's been put together by. It's been put together by. 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 Doesn't really see this. Let's go have a look at it. Classifying triangles, the key concepts, goals, and learning objectives. There's a little learning guide. Types of triangles. Um, a little maths mission, uh, classify triangles, work time, uh, making triangles, a link. Okay. All right, so this looks a little bit like a lesson plan. All right, but anyway, um, so that's one of the other places. Let's just go back to the beginning and just show you. You can say, for example, I'm English, interested in English grammar. And you can say uh, it's uh, in uh, English language arts education level. I'm interested uh, in the high school level. 
And now the standards, word of warning, the standards are all American. So they mean absolutely nothing to us. So just ignore them. But at least you are able to use the filter so that you can identify something within your, your curriculum. Uh, so I'm going to leave all this because it doesn't mean anything. And then we do a search. Okay. When we're looking at English grammar, there's quite a lot of stuff. Um, punctuation marks, um, um, analyzing grammar, pet peeves, the big grammar book, English language arts grade 11, uh, English language arts grade 11, American short story, blah, 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 blah. So you can see there's quite a lot of things here. So it's worth having a look at OER Commons while you're doing your search for materials that you could then adapt for the Zimbabwe context. All right. Yeah, I've been chatting for a long time now, so I'm going to uh, say that's enough. Let's go back to where we are. I'm going to uh, now quickly just say that hopefully you did that. So if any of that, you know, what? What did he say? Then I, you need to go back and have a look at the tutorial. The tutorial does it slowly. Well, not slowly, but quite quickly, but more thoroughly than I have this afternoon. I've just thrown a whole load of things on the screen. You need to study it. So look at tutorial number two. All right. If you ha have felt that everything I showed you, oh, yeah, 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 I understood it the first time around, Mr. Moore, then that's cool. So now you can move on to number three. All right. So number three is how to create your own. Okay. So um, the nice thing about OERs is that when we say create your own, it doesn't mean you have to build one from scratch. You can take an existing OER and either adapt it uh, or even mix it with other OERs to make a new OER. Andrew, are you still there? We can't hear you. Normally, we would say that with the five R's, five R's just tell you what you, you, what you can do with OERs. All right. There are five things you can do. Um, however, only two of them revise and remix require um, adaptation. So that's what the tutorial is about. So there's some sections on revision and there are some sections on remixing, which I want you to look at this evening. All right. However, if you say, no, I don't want to fiddle with someone else's OER, I want to create it from scratch. I've already got some nice stuff, which I just want to get up. All right. Then you can come to uh, want, well, have a look at those other sections, but then you can have a look here. What do you need to think about when you are creating your own? All right, so we've got some little considerations, and especially these three items here. All right, so the, um, the, if you're going to release it as an OER, there are three things it must do. All right, so Andrew, uh, please leave, um, show your screen. Andrew, please show your screen. All right. It looks like we crashed out. All my settings changed. I wonder why that was. I mean, even the recording went on and off. Okay, all right, sorry. So um, there are at least three things that you need to do if you're creating your own one. So tonight, I want you to go through, I want you to have a look at um, all these, um, these issues. And the best part is right at the end. So the last thing in the tutorial is how to license your new OER with one of those little number plates. We've seen them in tutorial number one. We saw them in tutorial number two, and now you can create your own one in tutorial number three. All right. So how do you do it? And there's some, um, there's some videos here. They should not do. So, all right, straight away, the first question is, all right, so you got to go through the little tutorial about how to license it. It's very easy. Okay, so don't worry too much. It sounds hard, but it's not. Uh, and then you're ready for tomorrow. So, all right. Um, I've now used up all my time. So, um, please, I'm going to put the, let me put the link in the WhatsApp now. So you can't complain that you don't know what's going on. Let's come back to the beginning. Here we go. Putting it in the WhatsApp as we speak, group number three. All right, um, so it's now in there. That's tonight's homework. Please make sure you do it and um, be ready that uh, the questions for the test tomorrow 
are from tutorials one, two, and three. So make sure that you've been through, you'll be expected to complete a test. Um, just, I'm gonna do the same way. So tomorrow I'm gonna release the test like 15 minutes before we open. So you can start in those 15 minutes if you want. Um, uh, and then that way we can even look at the results during our session. Okay, are there any questions then? I'm not, sorry about the hiccup where we lost the screen and we lost the sound, um, but hopefully you, you, you appreciate what, what we're up to. But we got two, uh, learn more. Let's have learn more first. All right, it's okay. Uh, today's this lesson was uh, better than the other two days, but okay. I'm very... I am very pained by the way you are eating up your, your keyboard keys on the keyboard. <laughs> 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 but today I was better than the other two. I think you are, you are moving better than the, uh, the other previous two days. I think uh, by tomorrow we'll be up again. Thank you very much, Mr. Mo. Uh, Lomo, thank you very much. Okay, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll be nicer to my keyboard. I do go through them. I bash them quite hard. Right, uh, Chingeto. Uh, thank you so much for the lesson. Um, I think today's lesson is the key of this whole uh, training. I don't know. I feel we need uh, maybe a repeat. Maybe it's only me because I'm using a, a, a cell phone. Uh, some of the things navigating was really a challenge. So I don't know. Maybe if you can have maybe afterwards to redo this one. My thoughts. Uh, right. Well, um, I'll put the recording up so you can have a look at the recording um, and then uh, go through slowly and rewind and watch it again, etc. cetera. Um, admittedly, I'm not doing it on the phone. I'm doing it on my PC <coughs> and I'm projecting the screen into Zoom. So the interface is different. And obviously they try and simplify the interface for the phones. So sometimes the functionality isn't there, but have a go. Tell me if you, uh, once you've been through it again, if you need a revision and we can always revise during the week, we can have another, another go. So I hear you, just keep me informed what's, uh, but I would say, look at the recording first, see how far you can get on the phone and then ask for specific um, revision. All right, then I'm gonna sign off for today. We'll keep chatting in the WhatsApp. I'm keeping an eye on there. Um, and um, can you be ready for tomorrow? 1400 hours make sure you have now completed uh, tutorials one two and three and be ready for the test okay thank you very much that's the end of today's session and you're free to go uh i'll see you tomorrow <laughs>